So today we're changing out the tracks on a Cat 257B3. These tracks are made by ASV, so it's an ASV undercarriage. First I took off the track by loosening this nut here and loosening this nut back off so the tensioner could go in. And then I took off this wheel. Pretty bad. The spec is down to one third, and I would say that it got narrower than one third right there. So we're gonna replace these. This was right here. So I took those bolts off, and I had to pry this wheel out. And I was able to drag the track out here. Put the old track back there. New tracks are right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the snap ring off of these you can see that the snap ring going right there is holding this dust cap on which is holding the nut which is holding the spindle through here or the axle shaft which is holding these two wheels together like i said asv built this undercarriage their spec is you can run these wheels down to there's only one third left. You saw the huge chunk out of the other one. This one's getting pretty close. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and change out these front four wheels, two, then two on that side. These bogey wheels or idler wheels don't have nearly as much chunks out of them. And all they really do is take weight. So, I'm going to leave those. Back wheels are metal. Obviously, those aren't chunked out yet. So, the only thing we have to do on these, two, four, six, eight, ten. So, the back ten will just get snap rings removed, the dust cap removed, the bearings are going to get repacked. And here's our new parts, new caps, new bearings, if we need them. Got enough to do about half of the machine. These are new bushings. So these bushings, we're gonna go to replace bushing where the bushing goes. One, two, right there. They are the pivot bushings for the main suspension. I got a couple bushings. New snap rings, because the old ones are gonna probably break as we take them out. And here's what we're replacing on the inside. Seals. Seals to keep our bearings clean dry, free from dirt and water, bearing races. And then these suckers are expensive. And I got one to replace all of them on this undercarriage because it's a double-sided seal. It's got rubber with a metal insert. And it goes back behind the hub and is gonna seal the hub to, if you could see, it would seal the hub back in here, which is where all the dirt's gonna try to get in. So, new seals for that, so that they don't have to worry about this again for the next 2,000 hours. Two new spindle shafts, in case we got one buggered up. And then, like I said before, a couple new wheels, 14 inch front ones to correct our problems with the 14 inch old ones that were all divoted out, which were letting the tracks 
walk back and forth. You can see the one on the right is actually narrower. So it was allowing the track to go back and forth, rubbing up against here. Also our track insides were wallowing back and forth in there. These are called the squirrel cage or the drive spindles. It's two metal pieces. These barely have any wear. So they come a little loose. It's just one sleeve inside another. I'm not gonna replace this. The kit to do these, if you wanna find them online, to do this whole squirrel cage, all those bearings is about $400. That's if you don't go to the cat dealership. The cat dealership wanted $12,000 worth of parts to refresh this undercarriage. I spent new OEM factory ASV tracks, new wear items, New tire, 14 inch tires. I spent about $4,700 shipped to my door from Georgia. So really happy with the price so far. I'm hoping that we aren't missing anything as we do this refresh. I'm not gonna show you guys everything as I take off these caps because it's kind of just a normal trailer axle. But what I'll do is I'll take short snippets as I Take this apart as we regrease it, and then we'll start putting everything back together. Thank you for watching. Big snap ring pliers, a couple screwdrivers. I'm gonna bust these caps off these spindles. I'm gonna go to town. Help if I had it for an inner instead of an outer, so that I can squeeze the snap ring shut. That's why we got new ones, because these are rusted. I'm sure they're plenty springy, but for about a dollar per snap ring, I'd rather just replace them in case they break as they come out. And I made a mistake. Should probably be wearing safety glasses right now. All right, so we have the inside one off. I like that it looks really clean. Doesn't look like a whole lot of water's gotten in there in the past. So um, also, if you were wondering, I pressure washed this thing like crazy for about an hour to remove all the dirt and obviously there's still a decent amount, but to get it out from all the little areas, I don't know, just my preference to try to keep a, a clean workspace. That way I have less dirt in my bearings, stuff like that. I feel like it makes it faster in the long run when you aren't knocking dirt off of everything. So let's get this thing taken apart. I'm going to 
gonna be using a, oh, I forgot to mention sizes, three quarter inch, takes off these bolts, inch and an eighth, takes off something. What's that thing take off? Oh, let's see, I used it to take off a bolt. Here's the three quarter inch bolts that hold the wheel on. I'll remember what the other size was for. Anyways, you'll need an inch and an eighth. Oh, I remember now. Inch and an eighth removes this bolt on the tensioner assembly, which you have to loosen at least in order to let this assembly drop down and relax so you can get the tracks off. Okay, so now we've got a 33 mil, which is gonna take this off. We'll hold it on the back side with something else. We're gonna use an impact wrench because it'll be a lot faster. may notice my hose is leaking. It's always fun when your hose constantly is spewing air out. So 33 mil took off this nut, which allows us to now knock this window off. You can see here comes the washer. It's the press washer that puts even force on the bearing. Nut, washer, and now we're out of there. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that there's a sleeve on the inside of your bearing race. So we have to punch that sleeve out of there in order to get our bearing out, in order to pack it and replace the insides. We have our spindle, looks pretty nice. Our other side, is loose. See it just floats. Then we have the back side, which we're going to take apart. Okay. Update. It is very important to get a minimum of two of these. Here's why. I could spend hours dropping 
this part so that this bolt would clear, but it's not going to without doing that. So I'll be required to do something not okay. And I'll be required to grab a hold of this spindle with a pipe wrench to hold it while this stubborn nut comes off. We got unlucky enough that this nut came off. If it had, if this one had stayed on, the inside one had come off, we could just pull the spindle shaft through. This whole assembly would drop down would be golden. But instead, we're faced with ruining this spindle shaft in order to get that off of there. loose. I don't know why that one's so hard. I'll have to let you know if all of them are that hard. But you definitely will need one of the axle spindles because this one's nonsense, right? I'm running the threads right here in order to get this off. And it's still really tight, which is weird. It shouldn't be that tight. Finally got it off, dirty, stinking nut. So now we can take our weight off of this spindle and we can slide this spindle out. All right, one spindle. Damaged threads, good threads. So this is junk, unfortunately. Like I said, that's why we should probably always get at least one because these 14 inch wheels are such that they cannot, let me show you, cannot clear. Even with no nut on there, it literally can't clear the bottom. So we got a new one. Luckily the rest are below. So they'll slide out just right. Two front 14s, something to be cautious of. Could have spent tons of time tearing this apart to drop this down so this would clear. But um, $20 for a spindle or an hour or two doing this for me, my time is worth it. Let's get an extra spindle or two for the two front 14s. Be done with it. Here's our front one. Here's our other wheel. We're gonna take this one apart, rebuild it just like the last one, and we'll start back up when we put those two together. See ya. We have these wheels taken off. You can see metal rear ones, bogey wheels, 14 inch, 14 inch hub that we rebuilt a little while ago, ready to be installed. These all need rebuilt. So I found a couple things out that are gonna make your life a lot easier. Number one, it is a pain to get back behind underneath there and take your snap rings off. 
So I had an idea. The idea was to take off the outer wheels and then just push this through. There's a problem though. That still hits. So next idea, reach in behind here with an impact, not that hard, take off all these bolts that are on the inside. The result was something like this. Guess what? Slides right out. Awesome. And also guess what? We needed to take the rubber wheel off anyways to access the little port there to fill up the inner hub with oil. Because if you look, it's slightly blocked there. So an Allen won't get in there, take it off unless we remove this. So that's my hack of how to get them out of here easier. And the other thing was I have to eat crow on what I said before about having to take off the inside dust cap, this piece, in order to get this off. Here, William, can you hold? Focus right here. So what you do is you take your impact, your 33 mil. You can scoot back a little bit. There you go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on here. I'm gonna impact it off while I pull out on this wheel and it results in being able to loosen one of the side nuts. Just like that. So I actually wasn't right. You don't have to take the inside apart because you can just do that. So that one's ready, get rebuilt. This one, you can see, is gonna hurt. So we have to do that thing where we come around the back side and take off all those bolts and put it on. Not a big deal, just takes a little bit of time. Can you get some there to push it off? Just takes a little bit of time. Um, but like I said, we aren't wasting any of our, sorry, talking loud because they're compressing. We aren't wasting our time because we have to take those plastic bogey wheels off their hubs anyways to fill the inner hubs with the gear oil. So we're still doing essential things that have to be done before we can put it back together, right? But um, we're just kind of doing stuff in a slightly different order to save ourselves time. And then the other thing I found was that while you have the tracks off is a great time to lube these bushings. The inner one was having a problem. It would not push grease out the side. This one would purge grease around here just fine. I'd grease it here. It would fill up this tube and then come out here fine. This one wouldn't, so I had to remove the grease cert. Then I took my drill with a quarter inch drill bit and I drilled in because what happened was, if I can find my What happened was, you can see on this bushing, this bushing goes in there. Look where that hole is. That hole is for the grease to go in. And the grease goes inside here and lubricates the inside spiral. What had happened was it was either installed wrong at some point, probably not, or it just spun just a little bit over the years in there. So this was facing the grease cert. So no grease could get in there. So I took the quarter inch drill bit, drilled into that. So that grease could get, then get down in to the inside here. I wasn't sure if it would capture one of those grooves where the grease goes. But as soon as I pump, put the grease cert back in and pump grease in it, it, started purging grease out here, which says it works. So another little hack, these bushings were not bad, so I'll return these because when I lift it up and down, I had very little play, kind of like a kingpin bushing on a truck. So 
Um, I'm not gonna change those out. Those, I got these just in case I needed to change them out. And luckily I can return what I don't use. Say hi, William. Hi. So this is how it looks now. I will sign off for a little bit. We're gonna remove the rest of these wheels. We're gonna get them to this stage. And then we're gonna set up a little assembly line where we pull them apart, where we pack them, take the inner seals out and get all the bearings in and out so that they're all rebuilt, ready to put back on. Putting them back on is gonna look really normal. I'll show you guys when we torque the bolts uh, and then we'll do that together. And then we'll get ready to put the track on. Thanks for watching. Got the nut started on both sides. I have the oil Allen head fill bolt removed. That takes a five mil Allen key. I have my torque wrench at 124 foot pounds of torque. 124 foot pounds of torque is the torque that you torque the axle shaft nuts to. It's 124 pounds plus or minus 25 pounds. So um, 124 is right in the middle. One key that you guys will want to remember when you're torquing these is you're going to want to spin the hub while you tighten the nut. What that does is it allows the bearings to roll on the cage and it allows everything to seat in better. That way nothing's on a bind. So while you tighten, spin these a little bit and everything will torque down just fine. Grab your dielectric grease, uh, Vaseline, whatever you've got on hand. Something that won't ruin the rubber. And we're going to smear that. all over kind of like assembling a tire you'll use some tire lube I don't know why I didn't think of that the first time but that is going to make it a lot easier. And see, I have this slack right here. Let's take off that slack. Excess track up here. Oh, well, you know, sometimes you get lucky. I don't know if you noticed that, but me pushing on up with my foot, once I got the track aligned, that um, it's on. Track actually just went on. Way easier. That's a little trick. Should have known. Pull this out. So my track is just started on my wheel, about half an inch. I'm gonna pull this out while I can. 
And then we're going to stick this rail side in right here. We can work everything in. So we're learning. So the moral of the story is put the outside ones, put them in the track here so that these teeth grip them and actually drag them in um, so you can install them because otherwise you're kind of up the creek. So now we just have to work this around, um, which actually may help if we lower the machine a little bit. Did it.